Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Eric Luth, and I work for the Swedish Wikimedia chapter, Wikimedia Sverige. I also work a lot with our initiative for a thematic hub around content partnerships, and I will talk during this session about one specific aspect of this initiative, something that we call the help desk. Uh, I just would like to start by saying that I'm really, uh, I'm really happy to be able to do this presentation, although I'm very sad that I am unable to join you all in Agadir. I had, I, I had planned to join you um, physically during the conference, but for private reasons, I, I wasn't able to do the journey to Morocco. I hope to see a lot of you at upcoming Wikimedia conferences soon. Um, but before I delve into the kind of larger context and the general idea behind the Content Partnerships Hub, uh, I'd just like to say a few words uh, to set the kind of general frame of of what the help desk is. I think it, it, this might um, make the understanding easier of, of the rest of the presentation. So the help desk is something that we are working a lot with at the moment in this hub initiative. And it's a function, I'll explain it more in detail in just a few seconds, but it, it's a it's a function to, to give hands-on support for content partnerships, to make it easier for anyone in the Wikimedia movement that would like to work with a partner, be it a museum or a cultural heritage institution or a, a library or an archive or whatever, um, anyone that would like to do a partnership with such an institution or organization to get hands-on support to be able to carry out this uh, partnership. Um, hopefully after this presentation, you will all have a clearer understanding what the how, what the help desk is and how they can support you in your everyday work. Uh, but before we get to the help desk in itself, I'd just like to sh say a few words also on the Content Partnerships Hub initiative. So as you might know, there's a lot of conversations going on in the movement at this point about so-called hubs, thematic and regional hubs, which would be new structures in the Wikimedia movement to do concentrated efforts and work within specified fields. And the regional hubs, obviously, uh, with a regional focus, be it in, in um, Eastern Africa, Western Africa, in Central and Eastern Europe, and, and so on. But there are also a few initiatives uh, for thematic hubs, hubs that would focus all their work in specific aspects of what we do as Wikimedians. And one of these thematic hub initiatives is the uh, initiative for a thematic hub around content partnerships. What is a content partnership? Um, some people, you know, in, in the way in, to try to understand what we are doing, call this the glam hub. I think this is slightly wider than glam. Uh, we're also preparing for a lot of work with uh, UN agencies, intergovernmental organizations, international NGOs, and parts of knowledge production um, movement, the, the, the free knowledge movement that we maybe have historically worked less with as Wikimedians. But this initiative in itself wants to increase the work that we are doing with anyone that would like to, to share their information and knowledge on the Wikimedia platforms. And, and for all Wikimedians that would like to work with partners to get content to the Wikimedia platforms. So in essence, this initiative is about making it easier for Wikimedians to work with partners that have knowledge and to get this knowledge to the Wikimedia platforms. I think this is a really also important initiative to fulfill one of the important recommendations for me in the, in the Wikimedia 2030 strategy, the, the recommendation to increase equity in decision-making. So obviously the, the hubs in themselves are important as a way to to increase the equity in decision making, to decentralize the knowledge, uh, to, sorry, to decentralize the the, the power in the movement, um, to 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 get more Wikimedians involved in in where the decisions are being taken, and and make sure that people can take decisions close to where they are operating. So it's a way of getting more uh, equity in decision making when it comes to the knowledge production and dissemination. But I also think it's important as a, in, in, in a wider context, because we know of the huge knowledge gap uh, that we currently have on the Wikimedia platforms. Um, there's a lot of knowledge produced and shared through from Northern and Western Europe, from the United States, from parts of um, Australia, New Zealand, South America, and, and so on. But there's also huge, huge knowledge gaps uh, in many parts of the world, in, including in many, for many African countries. 
And I think that if we can build functions, if we can build networks and systems to work better as a movement with partners across the world, no matter where they are on the journey towards open access, open knowledge, free knowledge, then I think that in the end, we will have a lot more geographic diversity um, of the knowledge on the Wikimedia platforms, which is also important for an equitable decision making in the long run. And I also think that it's important that, that this initiative is about supporting anyone that would like to start a journey towards successful content partnerships. Uh, and like, no matter where you are in the world, if you have an idea of a project that you want to carry out together with a partner that has content, then this content, content partnerships hub initiative is here to support you. So it's about supporting endeavors across the movement and absolutely not about replacing the movement's work. I will elaborate a bit more on the on the help desk in just a few moments, um, but it's important to bear in mind that the help desk idea is just one of several pillars in the hub that we are building. Uh, I mentioned previously the work that we are doing to, to work in better ways with IGOs, which is intergovernmental organizations, such as the UN organizations, uh, large inter intergovernmental organizations could also include the European Union, the African Union, uh, OECD, uh, and so on and so on. And I think that for the last decade, we have been really good at working with um, cultural heritage institutions because we think that we share a similar mission. But I also think that we share a similar mission with many of the IGOs and they host enormous amount of content that would be of great value for the Wikimedia platforms. So one important part of the hub is to try to get better at working with the IGOs to share their knowledge on the Wikimedia platform. But also very centrally is capacity building. Um, because as I said, this is not about replacing the work in the movement that is being done around content partnerships, but to get more people to feel they are able, have the capacity and, and the skills to work with content partnerships themselves. And this will only ever take place if more people have the capacity and the knowledge to, to, to start to do similar work in their contexts. So a really central aspect of the, this hub initiative is to build capacity around content partnerships. And finally, I'd just like to mention strategic data apples, because I think that in the knowledge system that we live in and, and the way that everything develops with, with generative AI, with with Wikidata connecting the internet, it's really important that we improve the strategic data, uh, that we improve the data, the structured data and commons, that we improve Wikidata to be able to, to, to put ourselves in the kind of central parts of, of the information uh, ecosystem on the internet. Um, but back to talk about the help desk. Why do we de develop this function? Um, everything started in the early days of this hub initiative with a needs assessment. So my colleagues spoke with, I think, more than 50 affiliates across the world, uh, all continents, all different backgrounds, uh, interested in all different parts of, of the kind of content partnerships work to, to try to get an understanding of what, what is the movement actually needing? Uh, what are the needs of the movement when it comes to content partnerships? And one of the things that appeared through this needs assessment was the insight that there is a huge bottleneck currently in our movement. There are a lot of partners uh, that have content and that would like to get this content to the Wikimedia platforms. And there are Wikimedias that want to work with these partners to get the content to the Wikimedia platforms. But the involved actors lack the know-how, they lack the technical capacity and the skills to carry these projects out. So there's a lot of content that is just kind of waiting there to be transferred to the Wikimedia platforms. And the help desk developed as a way to kind of overcome this bottleneck, to find ways of um, ensuring that we can get as efficiently as possible, as much content partnerships as possible carried out. So this is what the help desk is uh, essentially. It's service for the global movement. Um, you can reach out to the help desk, no matter the size and scope of the project that you, that you would like to carry out. Do you want to work with a museum and you have 50 files, 50 photos, 50 documents, 50 reports? That's great. Do you want to work with a museum that has 50,000 files? 
that's also great. Um, the importance is that uh, you have a partnership with some, with some kind of institution and you want to use this partnership as a way to get more knowledge to the Wikimedia platforms. And I think it's important to, to stress this again, that it's not about the scope and the size, but it's about getting more diverse uh, knowledge onto the Wikimedia platforms, decolonizing the knowledge, so to say. Um, so the support that is being given can take many different kinds of forms. Obviously, it can be a support with technical works to do batch uploads. Again, you have those 500 files from, from the local museum, maybe the maybe a museum in Morocco, and you would like to get them to the Wikimedia platforms, but you lack the technical know-how on how to do it. So then the help that can support you with the technical work, either explain to you how to do it yourselves, if you want to you know, uh, build, build capacity for yourself and be able to do this in the long run, or if you would rather work on the, in the on the dis dissemination aspects and, and engaging the community and working with the content, then we can also support with doing the actual batch upload and involve you very closely in the process when it comes to disseminating the, the output. Uh, so the helpers can, can be about giving support with technical work, such as around batch uploads. But it can also, and I think that this gets increasingly important, it can be about guiding you to the right people in the movement. Um, you want to understand the implications of a certain part or a certain aspect of this project. And you want to talk with someone who has done a similar project in another part of the world. With the work that we have done in, 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 the, in the Wikimedia Sveria and so far in the initiative, we're starting to build up a quite impressive network. Probably there will be some person in the movement that have faced similar challenges as the one that you are currently facing. And we are more than happy to, to try and help and, and guide you to the person that you would like to talk with. And in this regard, it, it also becomes increasingly about sharing best practices, finding similar projects that have been carried out, try to learn what, what was actually, you know, what were the success stories, what were potentially the, 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 the fail fests from this, from this project and try to transfer this knowledge to the rest of the movement. I think we might need to get much better at documenting and, and, and sharing documentation around the projects that we are running. Um, so these are three aspects, either giving technical, practical support, guiding you to the right persons or sharing best practices. But it can also be in very many other ways. And, and the only limitations are our fantasy, so to say. Um, I want to go back again to, to, to saying that this is a service for the global movement. Uh, so as a way to kind of ensuring this, and I'll talk a bit more about the expert committee in just a moment, uh, but to ensure that this is a service for the global movement, uh, the work is not guided by a small team at Wikimedia Sveria, the Swedish Wikimedia chapter, but it's guided by an expert committee that consists of, consists of experienced volunteers from across the world that have worked for a long time with content partnerships in different ways. So the ones that will give the priority, that will give the feedback, are not employed by Wikimedia Sveria, but are volunteers that have an extensive background in the field and, and that can give you a good, proper response and understand the complexities that you are facing. So that's, that's about what it is. How does it work? Uh, essentially, it's actually quite simple. You have this idea. You want to transfer those 500 photos from a museum in, in Morocco to Wikimedia Commons. You start to send an email. Um, you explain in the email um, the size of the collection, the scope of the collection, the gap that you think that the, the uh, collection could fill on the, on, on the Wikimedia platforms. You just describe a bit about the projects uh, all together and, and why you think that it's important to carry out. And you send this proposal to the help desk, uh, helpdesk at wikimedia.se. The email will go directly to the expert committee. Uh, the expert committee will give its initial feedback. They will talk about the, the pro project. Is it feasible? Um, will it require a lot of resources? What does the copyright situation look like? What does the technical situation look like? Is there any metadata involved? just to give an understanding of what, what the project will actually look, actually look like in practice. Um, if they think, 
if they think that the project is important and has a high priority, then we, the help desk uh, team, which is you know staff uh, of the initiative, will start to work with with you who requested the project um, to to see how can we move this in the right direction. Is there any way of getting hold of better metadata? Is there any way of solving any potential copyright issues? Um, do we need to have any uh, you know uh, agreement with the partners with the partner? Whatever it could be, we we start to prepare for the actual. Uh, for actually carrying out the project. And when everything is done, then the expert committee will give its final go and the help desk, help desk gives you the support in whatever form that the support would be needed. Uh, so it's quite an easy process. Uh, it's about involving you in the process as well to make sure that you learn uh, and feel that you have built capacity uh, on your end to, to be able to carry out similar projects, hopefully by yourself in the future. So to give a few examples of what it could actually look like in practice, um, we started to collaborate a bit with the Wiki Loves Earth international team earlier this year. And for those of you who don't know, the Wiki Loves Earth uh, campaign is a large international photo uh, campaign uh, or photo competition about um, documenting the natural heritage of our world. And more and more, um, affiliates in the movement that organize Wikilove's Earth, as well as Wikilove's Monuments, the other large photo campaign, uh, more and more affiliates that want to organize the Wikilove's campaigns, want to do this through Wikidata, um, have Wikidata kind of power the entire campaign. And why is this important? There's several reasons, but one of them is that when you kind of tie the campaign to Wikidata, then the uploads, the upload photos will automatically have much better, much better metadata, much more information, be structured in a better way. Um, and it's also easier to crowdsource together with volunteers improvements of the data. So the data might be flawed in the in like when you actually get it. Maybe it lacks coordinates, maybe it lacks good description, maybe it, it even lacks a name of the of the heritage area or, or where it is based. So when the volunteers visit these sites, it's much easier when it's in, Wik in Wikidata to, to, to crowdsource the, the, the um, constant improvement uh, of the data if it's actually run through Wikidata. So we worked with around 10 local Wikilove's Earth organizers to add their data to Wikidata during the spring. And on this map that you see in the slide, you can see the about, I think, 10 countries in Africa, um, which actually got their data to Wikidata uh, before Wikilove's Earth earlier this spring. And we got some really good feedback from this, that it was actually used and uh, and uh, uh, important for, for the local campaign. But we, we hope to increase this work uh, next year and make sure that even more countries that would uh, do would like to uh, run Wikilove's Earth through Wikidata could do this uh, with the support of the help desk. And we did a similar line of work together with Wikimedia Uganda earlier this week. Um, so our friends in Uganda reached out and wanted the support to run their Wikilove's Monuments campaign via Wikidata. So they had received data from the National Museum of Uganda. Um, the data was a long PDF file. Um, and <clears throat> historically, they had kind of transferred this PDF file into long lists on the Wikipedia. Um, the lists were really good. They were beautiful, had a lot of information. But when it's added as a long list on, on Wikipedia, like a manual table, then it's hard to update it. The information will easily be uh, outdated. It's hard to work with volunteers in improving the data. And there's really no connection between the, the information in the table and getting this uh, information in, in, in relation to the, to the photos on Wikimedia Commons and the objects on Wikidata. So when we worked with Wikimedia Uganda, the Wikimedia User Group of Uganda, to transfer this data to, to Wikidata, we went from just a very few cultural monuments in Uganda on Wikidata to now more than 500. Um, and these 500 cultural monuments in Wikidata uh, can be made into long beautiful Wikidata powered lists that are much easier to update and use in the Wikilove's Monuments campaign. Uh, it's easier to, to use it for the for the um, for the Wikilove's Monuments um, campaign for sure, but it's also easier easier for volunteers to to 
to join in and work with the data and, and improve the information that we have about cultural monuments in, in Uganda. So for example, at this point, only about 100 of these monuments as coordinates. Uh, you can see those monuments with coordinates on the map. But when we have um, the list where it shows the lack of data, it's also much easier for volunteers to realize that, for example, oh, okay, now I'm here at this statue in Uganda and it doesn't have coordinate in the list. Then I actually, I can contribute myself and, and add those Wikidata or add those coordinates to the Wikidata object to, to, to constantly support and the improvement of this data. Um, and we also used the insights from, from, this, um, from this work to develop a series of uh, learning clinics with the Let's Connect team that are actually currently taking place. And when, when the learning clinics are over, uh, the, the, the recordings from the, from the, um, the recordings from, from the clinics will be available for, for anyone who would like to see them uh, afterwards. I mentioned a few words about the expert committee. So as to, 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 to ensure that um, we are increasing the equity in decision-making, that we are um, really a service for the global movement and that we contribute to the decolonization of knowledge and, and, uh, and decentralization of, of uh, knowledge dissemination. We have invited a global group of volunteers that are really experienced, as I mentioned before, that have worked with content partnerships in different ways for many years to be the ones to actually give the input and prioritization of the work that we are doing. So these eight great people meet on a monthly basis to discuss the requests that are coming in and content and, and, and continuously help to improve the, to the requests so that the projects will be finalized um, and, and carried out in a good way. This is where we are now. Uh, the next steps for the work that we are planning to do is to develop some kind of working groups. The idea is to involve even more uh, affiliates, more people in the movement, also staff at the different Wikimedia affiliates um, to, to, to work with specific parts of the help desk where they have a lot of capacity and skills that they can also share so that it's about the two way communication and, and informing each other from, from several different perspectives. So, so I think that the working group idea is, is, a, is an important key to kind of scale the work of the help desk to another, um, to another level. We also want to support more requests. So we're really looking forward to get proposals from your end on, on projects that you, that you would like to carry out with content uh, partners. Um, it can, again, be of uh, all sizes, all scopes, uh, all types of institutions, organizations, the museum, the library, the, the um, local uh, UN agency or the local government archive or whatever it could be. And also obviously contribute with more learning. Um, if there is any specific part where you think that I would love to learn this, but I don't know how to get this knowledge and um, I would like to get your help, you're more than welcome to reach out about that as well. Uh, we're more than happy to try to answer any knowledge related questions that we can as well. Uh, so support more requests and contribute with more learning is something that we're definitely looking into doing in the upcoming months ahead. And I think that's about it. I'd love to leave a few minutes to be able to uh, answer any questions that might have come up during the course of this presentation. Um, so I think that I'm ending there and look forward to discussing uh, further with you for a few minutes of questions and answers. Thank you. And again, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out at helpdesk at wikimedia.se. Thank you.